previously on Avatar. My name is Ong. Leave him alone! This was pretty big for me because it's one of my near and dear topics to me. Is the Avatar The Last Airbender. This is a really fascinating series for me. I grew up with it. I watched the animated franchise live on cable. But for those who don't know, there is a live action film that was made in 2010. I didn't see it. I avoided it like the plague. I saw the reviews and I heard horrible things about it. Um, we're going to watch a couple of clips on that because I think it's hilarious how bad the acting is and what we see with the choreography. Read through a couple things that I found on Wiki about the 2010 film. And then we're going to look at the latest film that Netflix is coming out with in 2024. So first with the 2010 film says the last airbender is a 2010 american action adventure fantasy film written co-produced and directed by m knight salomon based on the first season of nickelodeon animated tv series avatar the last airbender avatar the last airbender co-creators michael dante d martino and brian konitsko voiced their opinion in an interview regarding salomon's writing directing and producing the film the two displayed much enthusiasm for Shalaman's decision for the adaptation, stating they admired his work, and in turn, he respects their material. So what's interesting is at the beginning here, there's a lot of positivity from the original Avatar team that animated the series, and they're going to work with this director. And then the second part's pretty funny. In 2014 interview, Konitsko and DiMartino said that the project was given the go-ahead without their approval, and when they tried to provide input, it got all pushed to the wayside. And they're quoted in saying this, In the beginning, it was more positive, and we offered help, but then we had a big fallout. So something happened. We don't know the details behind it, but I'm going to guess there's a bit of yelling involved. Furthermore, Salomon said, I took away a little bit of the slapstick stuff that was there for the little kids and the fart jokes and things like that. We grounded Katara's brother and that they did wonderful things for the whole theme of the movie. I don't believe that. Taking that stuff out of it, that's some core elements of the original animated series was the dynamic between Katara and the goofiness of her brother. So I don't know why they would take that out. He thinks his vision is the way to go. And let's look at the review on the film. It says, On Rotten Tomatoes, The Last Airbender holds an approval rating of 5%. And this is based off 192 reviews with an average rating of 3 out of 10. Making it the lowest rating film produced by Nickelodeon movies as well as Shalomon's worst reviewed film to date. The site's critical consensus reads that Last Airbender squanders its most popular source material with incomprehensible plotting, horrible acting, and detached, joyless direction. So things to highlight here is the original co-creators thought they were going to have some input, liked the direction it was going, and then the project was started without their approval. Not that that's a requirement when it comes to licensing any kind of IP, but that would have been nice, right? For them to check it off and say, hey, we had the original vision. We did all of our research on how we wanted to create these characters and we involved our own lives into it. We would like some kind of approval. And then when they try to provide that feedback on what they're trying to put together, whether it's through their storyboards, they're just told, no, too bad. We're going with what we want to do because we think our vision is superior. Okay. Well, here's the warning. And the reason why I read all that is in the 2024 film that we're getting next year out of Netflix. Guess what's happening? Let's read. In 2018, Netflix announced that a reimagined live-action remake of Avatar was to start production in 2019. The series' original creators, same guys, that would be Michael and Brian, were initially announced to be the executive producers and showrunners. That would have been awesome, and that's where we thought the direction was going. But then in June 2020, the creators departed from the series due to creative differences. Ah! Sounds like what we just heard in the 2010 film. What a surprise. 
pair cited the differences in their approach to the show compared with Netflix's vision, also citing a negative and unsupporting environment during their time with the studio. Wow, that's not good. So again, they're probably getting shoved out. People have their own ideas that they want to bring into it. They don't want to hear what the original creators have to say because they want their film to come to light, not somebody else's. And I bet that happens all the time with movies and TV shows. That's that's sad. I think the original creators should be the source material. And I understand whenever you translate into live action, that's a bit tough and you have to do some kind of creative thinking and problem solving. But it doesn't sound like they're doing that here. It continues to say here that if that wasn't bad enough, Jeremy Zuckerman, who composed music for the original show was originally set to return to compose the music that was for the remake but later denied his involvement with the show after DiMartino and Konitsko left the project so the original guy who did the music decided he doesn't want to get involved because the two original co-creators aren't involved wonderful the series is scheduled to premiere on February 22nd 2024 on Netflix and will consist of eight episodes, each episode costing more than 15 mil to make. Holy, Netflix got the money. But even if you pump a lot of money into something, doesn't make it a good film. So now we're going to look at what made the 2010 film so bad. I'm going to put majority of the failure not on the actors, but the direction and the directors and those supporting those actors. So let's see how bad this is. The Avatar is dead. If he was here, he would protect us. My name is Ong. I'm Aang. Are you serious? Okay. That is part of the actor's fault. Okay. Yeah. All right. What else? And I'm the Avatar. What? It's a giant mushroom. Baby, it's friendly. Leave him alone. Ah! <laughs> How is he doing that? Dude, those those gusts of wind look like they just recorded a gust of wind in the desert, and they're like, ah, let's use that for air bending. I thought the VFX for this was supposed to be amazing, and that was the drawing factor. I saw whenever this was trying to come out with the trailer, and it looked very interesting i loved the animation or the vfx that they did for this live action but then seeing this this is awful and i will tell you this is like the lowest quality it only goes up to 480p but i mean that's a gust of wind bro that's not that's not anything that looks good for <laughs> the avatar how is he doing that and i'm the avatar i don't want to hurt anyone all airbenders should be dead. Kill him! You just sneezed and flew 10 feet in the air. Okay. Everybody can help us now! Ah. Friendly mushroom! Mushy giant. <laughs> <laughs> You're still a rock now. What the fuck was that? Dude was having a conniption and then the fire finally moved. Wow, that was bad. <laughs> wow, it took that many guys to pick up a little rock. Whoever did the VFX for this, this is their first project they've ever done in their entire life. Look, they're just standing around. It's kind of like whenever you play those video games and the enemies are just standing there and they wait one at a time. What are they doing? They look so awkward. Yeah. 
And notice like every time they move their arms or something, there's meaning behind it and it actually drives some kind of bending. But whenever those other guys were spazzing out like Power Rangers, nothing was happening. Water is what? Water's wet. The flowing element, the element of change. It's master water. Um. I'm Ang. Um. I'm Ang. Um. Would you like to spar? Um. Spar in a few days. Stop, Zhao. Everyone it. will be hurt. The Fire Nation is so vulnerable to worry about children. Commander Zhao. Commander Zhao. Don't. No! Uh, Our table! It's broken! <laughs> okay, buddy. Let's go! Yeah. No way, that's real. You make the fire out of nothing. You make the fire out of nothing. wasn't a good movie. I'll say. No kidding. Horrible. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> but the effects were decent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they took the scene from when they're walking out of the theater. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, the, the effects look great. Uh, some of them, except for this wind stuff. This was garbage. And like I said, it's like the team's working... Working behind the scenes, trying to get everyone coordinated together. Like, you got people standing around. They're doing awkward movement. The lines these actors were given weren't that great. And then they're saying stuff that isn't even in line with the, the film or the, the animated series. As if they've never watched it. It's making fire out of nothing. Oh my gosh. It's like someone who didn't do their homework and was like, oh shit. Gotta get this done real quick. And then this next video shows their acting chops, supposedly. Let's see if it's direction or the actors themselves. So, are you the Avatar Ong? That child was being arrested. For what? He was bending tiny stones at us from behind a tree. It really hurt. He can bend Ooh. Earthbending is forbidden in this village. Leave him alone. You're not taking him anywhere. No one is taking anybody away. No Whoa. one is taking anybody away. No one is taking anybody away. Oh, you gotta put some emotion behind that. <laughs> Are those even the proper, like hand movements that they have in the animated f series like this is just made up Katara! oh wow he seems really frustrated oh my gosh that's embarrassing okay okay and then this video I skipped four because it's just the intro here this is talking about does M. Night Shalomon care about the Last Airbender's bad reviews? So, like I said earlier, it had a 5% positive review on Rotten Tomatoes. That's awful. Let's see what his response is. There's no excuse, whatever he's going to say in America have been pretty harsh, but does that affect the way you move on to number two? 
Well, no, you know, the, the critics are, I don't know what's going on with me and the critics in the United States. I got to tell you, um, something's going on. They just don't get you. They've never got me and it's getting worse. They're like, it's almost like, go away. Man, she baited him by saying that. I don't know if she's a really good interview and she's an interviewer and she just baited him with that question to see if he'd accept it. But come on, dude. It's not just the critics, the hardcore guys who watch films every single day. Anyone outside of that can even understand that the film sucks. And I think I also think that I'm getting more, uh, you know, influenced by other cultures more, as you can see from the movie. And so I'm not doing like a straight up American movie anymore. The tonalities are changing. You know, I always had a European sensibility to my movie. So they, the, the pacing is always a light, little bit off for, for them, you know, and it feels a little stupid. European movies aren't more, that bad. They need more electricity and all that stuff. And I'm like, this is the way I, I think of things. Because, you know, Hitchcock and Kurosawa and Stanley Kubrick, these are like the, my teachers. And uh, so I, it could be a little bit of that, that there's just a little bit of cultural difference. Because, like, you know, I'm, I'm just like on this movie, like I'm very used to kind of getting on a plane from the U.S., having been savaged by them, and then going to, like in this case, I went to Japan next, and then they're like, genius! And, uh, you know, you can lose your mind a little bit going on. I encourage anyone listening, just if you want to know about the cultural influence that the co-creators took on the original series, watch. There's an interview on YouTube where they're getting asked about their creative process and how they came up with the idea of the show. And they talk about all the influences that they took in and how they used actual types of martial arts to influence the bending. This guy's just like, well, it's, it's just based off of me. I mean, you're up by me. That's me. And I put me in film and that's the crap that you got. Like, he can act like he's pulling from different cultures. But when you watch that, that thing's just a parody. I'm not seeing it. Maybe he has a diverse cast, which is good, because the series is supposed to have that. Um, I'm not seeing it, anything outside of that. If he's talking about martial arts, that crap that they were doing was just jumping around and doing some ice skating tricks. I, I didn't like any of that. On Saturday for being an idiot to Sunday being a genius, but uh, it gives you perspective, you know? But luckily for me, it's not something I can fight, you know? Um, it's not my fight to fight. I'm, I'm defenseless. It's the audience. If they choose to fight for me, they fight for me. And, and they have, uh, through my career, um, I, I'm on. I'm going to on this to one. To have that relationship with them, and I'll keep fighting for that relationship. Um, and maybe 20 years from now, to any, I'll get a good review. We'll sit here together, and I'll be like, I got a good review. I'll be like, woohoo, high Scream. five. <laughs> good review. Um, no. Nope, still not. It's been uh, 13 years. You're still at 5%. So good luck with that. Might be able to scroll to the bottom where your mom commented, but that's about it. Okay, so now we're going to try to look at a film that's a little bit better, and this is the modern one that's coming out next year. This is the very, very first video marketing material that they put out for the Netflix live action adaptation. And this just shows off the elements. I don't know. I hope this is the, like the intro sequence with the benders, but um, I don't know. Let's see. Okay. So they're just showing off that they have talent to make the effects and budget. And to get a tone set for those who are super excited about anything Avatar. Okay, now this is the actual first teaser. Should have some actual live action moments in here. This came out only two days ago. I am really excited. 
I know it will be better than the 2010 thing. Anything will be better than the 2010 thing. You can only go up. You can't go down. The only way you could go down is if it turned into like some P hub thing. I mean, quite frankly, the acting on the previous one was that. But I digress. Time. Time is a funny thing. The past. Wow. The future. They look good. It all gets mixed up. <laughs> he looks great. <laughs> There's only one way to keep it straight. Nice. Crescent Island. Hell yeah. Okay. Always remember who you are. That was Azula. There's some better wind. There's Oppo, sweet. Momo. That doesn't look too jarring. That's good. Oh, and there's the first thing. Okay. Ooh, I need to go through these scenes. Hold up, back it up, back it up. So I don't know if this is going to... This is all book one, I know that. So this must be the end of book one, potentially. With the big fight, maybe. No, book one... What are they showing here? What part of book one is this? Because it's just water is book one, and they never even got to... Um, the Fire Nation. Huh. I can't remember. Maybe this is a flashback. You guys will have to let me know in the comments if you know. This is obviously the first episode. Is this the dome that Aang is in? This looks amazing. Holy crap. And that must be Sokka? Future. Oh no, that's Katara there. Yeah, and that's the orb that hangs in. What do we got over here? So this is the Earth Kingdom. Oh my gosh, they did a good job. Uh, and there's the, the transportation system. <laughs> we better get the episode where Aang and Boomy are just going down this thing. And we also got to make sure we have the Cabbages guy somewhere. Did they just smash through his stuff? I hope they, they'll definitely do the trials. I mean, that's just, they gotta do the trials. That is so cool. Here's Zuko, okay. There's, and then he's on his ship. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna shoot myself. I can't remember his name. Uh, his uncle. Oh no. Uh, I, Iroh? Uncle Iroh, is that it? I hope. We better have the scene with his son. And if you know the scene I'm talking about where he's under the tree and he's... Oh, man. He's reminiscing and mourning his son's death. That's that's important. They need to put that in here. There's Ozai. Skip ahead. This is... uh. Oh, my gosh. I don't remember her name. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Suki? Is that her name? I think so. Uh, is this also... This is them later in this series, or is this when he starts training with them? I can't tell. I hope they do the, the, the haiku battle where they go back and forth. Uh, doing poetry. 
Oh man, there's so many good moments they could include. And this fight scene. This was much better with wind. It needs to have a lot of things picked up in the air from Aang using his abilities. Oh! Is this the air temple? Or is this the... The scene with the panda? Can't tell. It's book one. I, Book one definitely has the air temple in it. But I don't know if they had the scene where they're in the woods and... Uh, the spirit panda bear thing. Its habitat gets destroyed. But they are getting the tone correct because they're including a lot of the religious stuff that comes from Aang's culture. And then they're also including spirituality with the, the forests and how Aang always has a open heart and is very caring for not just himself, but those around him. And I'm getting that from this scene. <laughs> I think this is when uh, they're running away from the Fire Nation through the woods and they're fighting off the guys chasing them. Because they're outcasts at this point, I believe. We got... This is him entering the Avatar state. They're probably going to do a scene where he goes into the spirit world. Right here, maybe? Ooh, this looks good. That's powerful. It doesn't look like a fart, fart wind. Yeah, yeah, okay. This looks great. This is so much better than the 2010 version. <laughs> okay. We got Momo. Uh, you're looking kind of... Kind of furry-esque, but I think it's okay. <laughs> it's a little disturbing, I'm going to be honest. So they went with... What's that called whenever you use real objects instead of doing computer-generated? Forget it. But it looks like they did that with Appa and Momo. They're actually there and they're sitting on him. And he might actually be on like strings and stuff. And they might just animate like the, the eyes opening and closing and some of the movement. That's really cool. Here they are flying. I don't know what island that is. Oh, okay. And we saw that. All right, cool. That is so much better than the 2010, just based off of this trailer. I'm definitely going to watch this. I remember when I first saw the trailer, the first 2010, I had, I had so much hesitation. I was not going to dive into it, but this gave us a lot of good information. And I think they brought on the right cast and team to make it possible. We did talk about the co-creators dipping out, but I don't know. This vision looks pretty good. It may not be perfect, but I'm not looking for a perfect adaptation. If I want that, I'll just go back to the Avatar studio because they're going to put out some new stuff coming up in the next couple of years with another sequel to uh, Avatar Last Airbender and Korra. I'm just going to watch that. But I welcome all attempts to translate anything that's in animation form to live action. Because good luck with that. That is hard as hell. Okay. That is all the Avatar stuff I want to talk about. Put this on your radar. It's coming up.